station. This is Houston. Sunita, are you ready for the event? I am ready for the event. Wycliffe Progressive Community School, this is Houston. Please call the International Space Station for a voice check. Station, this is Chris Kolaris, principal at Wycliffe Progressive Community School. How do you hear me? Hello, everybody at Wycliffe. We've got you loud and clear from the International Space Station. How do you hear us? Loud and clear, Sonny. Thank you. That means hello and welcome to what Chris in Japanese. Hello, my name is Wow, Aki, he's uh, right right behind the camera and he knows he could hear you. Hello, my name is Sasha. Здравствуйте. Традиционная школа Weekly приветствует международный экипаж на борту МКС. Hello, the Wycliffe Progressive School welcomes the international crew aboard the International Space Station. That was awesome Russian. Oh my gosh, I wish I knew that much Russian. You, you sounded wonderful. I'll have to make sure our cosmonaut friends Yuri Gennady and Sergei uh, hear you talking. Thank you so much. Hi, Sunny. My name is Andrea, and my question is, what's your biggest fear of going up in space? Hi, Andrea. I think I uh, know who you are. It's good to hear your voice. So what's my biggest fear about going into space? Wow, uh, that's a little bit of a hard question because I don't, I don't think I'm that afraid about going into space. It feels like a second home up here. Uh, I've got great friends up here. Uh, I miss my family and of course I miss my dog back at home. But my, I think my biggest fear is um, probably when I left, you never know if you might not see all those people again. We probably will. More than likely, we're going to have a very successful mission, and we come back to home in November, and that's what I'm really looking forward to eventually. Thank you. Hi, Sunny. I'm Berto, and my question is, what do constellations look like from space? So constellations, they look uh, sort of like what they look like from Earth. There's just a little bit of a difference. And the reason I'm t telling you this is because we're not much farther off of the surface of the planet than, than where you are compared to where the stars are. The stars are millions of miles away, and we're only about 250 miles away from you. And so this, the constellations look pretty similar. However, there's no atmosphere. There's no water vapor. There's no water in the air between us and them and so the stars look crystal clear and um, actually it's a little more difficult to find constellations I think from space because there are so many stars out there and they are so clear so we actually see thousands and thousands of stars hi Sonny my name is Nico what is a typical day like in space So it's interesting you asked that question too. There is barely a typical day, but what start what is usual that happens is we get up somewhere around six o'clock and we go to bed somewhere around ten o'clock. Uh, we try to get eight hours of sleep up here, which is sometimes a little difficult because we are orbiting the planet sixteen times a day, so there's lots of sunrises and sunsets in one twenty four hour period. But sometimes we're getting ready for a space walk, like what we're doing right now. Sometimes we're working on a robotic arm that's outside of the space station and moving parts and pieces around or actually catching a new spacecraft that comes up. One we did the Japanese vehicle, the HTV, which is parked right up there. Sometimes we're working with a robot called Robonaut, which is right in front of me, you might see, um, doing some experiments on that. And sometimes we're doing experiments on ourselves, taking our own blood samples or working out on an exercise bike or a weightlifting machine that we have or doing any types of other experiments. Over here is a microgravity uh, glove box, science glove box, which we do burning experiments in. Um, also, also, all sorts of experiments on materials. So every day is different up in space. Thank you. Hi, Tony. My name is Sarah, and I have a question for you. Did you dream of being an astronaut when you were a kid? 
You know, I never knew any astronauts when I was a kid. Um, I, uh, of course, knew when the, the guys were walking on the moon, and I thought that would be really awesome, and I really want to do that. Um, but, you know, I never grew up knowing anybody who had ever done it, so I didn't really know what you had to do to be an astronaut. So actually, I wanted to be a veterinarian when I was a kid, and actually through, uh, through high school. Um, and so I was looking to do that, uh, but then I got interested in going into the military, and I started flying helicopters, and that was the first time I got to know people who were astronauts. So when I was a little kid, uh, no, I didn't think I could do it. And now as, a, as an older kid, um, I wish you guys would do it because it's a whole lot of fun. And I had, wish I had known somebody when I was your age who was an astronaut to, to tell me how much fun it is. Okay. Hi, Sunny. My name is Annie. Can animals survive in space? Can animals survive in space? Well, that's a, that's a good question. Um, there have been animals in space before. You might have heard of uh, Laika, Belka, and Strelka. Those are Russian dogs that went up to space before humans did. Uh, we also launched uh, ch chimpanzees into space in the early parts of the program. Here on the space station, we've had mice and we've had spiders, as a matter of fact. But it is, it is a little bit difficult um, to live in space. Of course, you float around quite a bit, and you have to get used to floating. And so our hands come in really handy because we can grab onto a handrail and stop ourselves. Uh, animals would have to adapt uh, to be able to do that. And you know what's also difficult in space is um, going number one and number two. So we'd have to figure out how to make sure the animals did that in a good way. So in the meantime, Robonaut's holding my friend. It's the imitation of my, my dog. It's a little stuffed dog, a little stuffed Gorby. Uh, that way I don't have to worry about the number one and number two stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, Sonny. My name is Leo. What can you see from the space station? Hi, Sonny. My name is Leo. What can you see from the space station? Well, you know, we have a couple really great windows, um, some of them that look down toward the earth and a couple that look out toward the side. And then we have a cupola, which is right behind you and around the corner, which actually has six windows around and then a one big window on the top. And so we can really see all out toward our galaxy and then down toward our planet. We know where we are usually by just one looking out the window or two we have a program called world map and it shows exactly where we are over the planet and so right now we're right off the coast the east coast on the atlantic ocean so if i went up to the cupola right now i would be able to see uh, the atlantic ocean in about three hours we should be flying over the midwest of the united states and i'll be able to look down and see ohio i'll probably be able to see the great lakes some things that are really visible are bridges, of course. On a clear day, I could see the Statue of Liberty and the pyramids, but I have to really know where I'm looking because we're flying at 17,500 miles an hour, and so we zip past those things pretty quick. Hi, Sunny. My name is Sam. My question is, what is your mission? So our mission, we are the 32nd uh, expedition to the International Space Station. The International Space Station has been here in space about 12 years. And our mission is really focused on doing science experiments. Um, we're also, our mission also gets to do a spacewalk because we have one box that's outside, a big electrical box, probably about this big. Um, that's not working quite right right now. So we're going to go outside and replace that box. Also, during this spacewalk, which is part of our mission, right in the very front of the space station, that's the very front right there, um, it sometimes gets hit by micrometeorites, and so we're going to put a big cover on the front of the space station. So those are some of the big goals that we're going to do during our spacewalk. But overall, during our four months of, of being up here, uh, most of the time we'll be doing science experiments to, hope, to help us create better spacecraft and potentially f to help you guys go to Mars. 
Hi, Sonny. My name is Connor, and I have a question for you. What do astronauts do for fun in space? Well, can you imagine what we do for fun in space? Do that. Sometimes we have to eat. <laughs> There's a lot of things we do for fun. So eating and eating and drinking is a lot of fun in space and floating and flying of course is a lot of fun in space. But I think I know exactly what you mean. Other things too that we get to do. Uh, we can use a phone. So we have a phone call through the computer so we can talk to our family and friends. Sometimes we have uh, TV shows that we can watch up here if we you know if we are tired at night and we just want to watch a TV show. And even sometimes we have football and baseball which we're able to get up when the antennas are quite right and we can watch that so we have a little a couple things we can do for entertainment while we're up here hi Sonny my name is Max and have you ever gotten sick in space that's a great question and you know luckily enough um, none of us up here have gotten sick, but we're ready for that. We have all sorts of medical supplies, and we actually go through a lot of training on the ground to make sure that we know how to uh, fix, help another person if they are sick in space. Um, we don't always have a doctor up here. None of us on board right now of the six of us are doctors, so we have to know how to be able to take care of ourselves. And so we have everything from simple stuff, like if you had a headache, all the way to something if something happened and somebody got shocked. Uh, we have all the equipment to take care of each other, but luckily uh, nothing like that has ha happened, and we actually do physical tests, uh, like, um, you know, do a physical on each other um, probably once a month to make sure we're all in good working order. Hi, Sonny, and my name's Ryan. What is your favorite thing you get to do in space? Probably my favorite thing to do is look out the window. Uh, the other day I was up there, and looking out the window at, in the daytime is wonderful. It's awesome because, you know, you can look at the planet, uh, you can look out into space, and that's really pretty. But when, you, when it's nighttime is like when you see all those stars that I was talking about, and it just feels like you're in, an, in another, another place, and it's beautiful, and um, you can see all the city lights, over the planet, you can see where it's dark or where it's light over the planet. Um, one of the things that I thought about if I was ever to go to Mars is I'd like to probably take a lap around Mars when it was nighttime, because there's places on this planet that I wouldn't have thought anybody lived, but then at, when we fly over at night, the lights light it all up. So there's people in these places which it doesn't look very hospitable at times. And so I think uh, to answer your question, looking out, the looking out the window is probably my favorite thing to do. Uh, close second would be flying around and having my hair stand up on end. Hi, Sonny. My name is Sophia. And my question is, when you are leaving Earth, do you all of a sudden start floating? Pretty close. Um, I don't know how, if you guys know, it only takes about eight minutes uh, when we're in the rockets that we fly. I flew a space shuttle, and this time I flew a Soyuz, on a Soyuz rocket. only takes about eight minutes to get to space, and that's when the engines cut off and you stop accelerating and you're outside of the atmosphere. And as soon as that happens, your arms start to float up. And now I'm used to it at least so much that unconsciously I, I hold them back down. But if I don't think about it, my arms start to come back up again. So if you ever saw people who are sleeping up here, you'd see their arms sort of floating because they, they don't naturally fall down like they do on Earth. And so right after that eight minutes happens and the engine shut off, you just start floating around. And so you have to get used to holding yourself down. Thank you. Hi. Hi, Sonny. My name is Luca. 
How can you sleep given the gravity, air pressure, and danger? So sleeping is interesting. Um, we sleep in sleeping bags, and I don't know if you could see right behind me here, there's four sleep stations, one on all the walls, um, and you sleep in your sleeping bag and close the doors to your sleep station. It's like a little room. And what's nice about the little room is it's dark and it's pretty quiet, and so um, you, you can get a pretty good night's sleep and you don't have to worry about all those sunrises and sunsets. You know, but you bring up a good point. In the back of your head, you know where you are. We're in a, we're in a spacecraft that's orbiting uh, in space, which is not very hospitable to human beings outside without a space suit on. And so I think in the back of your head, you know that it's, a, it's some place that you have to pay attention to. Um, so if something happens in the middle of the night, we all know that we're ready to get up and take care of any problems. And so, yeah, there's a little bit that's, that you think about, but you're able to get a good night's sleep up here. I think also because we... We work like a normal work day, and so then you sleep about eight hours a night. So that feels pretty good. Hello, Sunny. My name is Phoebe, and this is my question. If all the astronauts speak different languages, how do they communicate? That's a really good question. Uh, you guys, obviously, some of you know a little Japanese, some of you know a little Russian, and I think some of you know a little English, about as much English as probably I know. Um, and so usually uh, the conversation is a little bit Russian and a little bit English. Um, the other partners who are involved with the International Space Station, the Japanese Space Agency, the Canadian Space Agency, the European Space Agency, um, they all speak English and uh, the Russians do as well. All the cosmonauts and astronauts speak Russian and English. Um, sometimes you don't know a word in the other language and so you say it in your language and maybe that other cosmonaut or astronaut knows it in their language and can help you. So we do a little bit of um, runglish for the most part up here and uh, the flight control teams on the ground because we have a control team in Russia, in Europe, in Japan and, uh, and actually in Huntsville, Alabama, as well as Houston for the U.S. side, um, are all speaking their native languages. And so when we're talking to them, sometimes we have to speak in their native language. Hi, Sunny. My name is Michaela. My question is, is it hard to walk in the spacesuit? So the spacesuit is pretty big. Probably on the ground it weighs about 300 pounds or so. It sort of looks what Robonaut looks like right here. It has a backpack, and in our spacesuit backpack, it, all, it has all of our life support. What I mean by that, it has our oxygen in there, and it has a way to get rid of the carbon dioxide. Remember, on the ground here, we have plants and trees that get rid of our carbon dioxide. Here inside of our backpack we have another piece of equipment that does that as well as the oxygen bottles. It also has a cooling um, system so that when we're working really hard it can pump cold water to our whole suit and keep us cool down. And that helps us because when we're working hard, and it's hard to work in that suit because the suit is pretty stiff and so moving around in that suit is a little bit hard. But just like inside, spacewalking is a funny word. It's actually not really walking. Um, there's handrails on the outside of the space station also, and that's how we move from one place to another using our arms. And so moving the big suit around, the stiff suit, is difficult, and so that cooling system I talked about on the backpack really helps. And luckily, none of that feels like it weighs anything, so we don't have to worry about carrying that. It's just a little bit stiff. It's sort of like a, we're working inside of a balloon. But uh, it works out pretty nice, and we're getting ready to... We've tried them on, and we're getting ready to go outside with them on Thursday. Thank you. Hi, Sunny. My name is Ryan. What experiments are you working on right now? Wow. Uh, a lot of experiments, actually. I was telling you about the microgravity science glove box here. We just got done with some burning experiments, all sorts of different types of materials we had in there. We were trying to catch on fire to see if they would burn in space. Things burn a little bit differently here. Gravity has a, an effect on fire. 
Um, we're also working on other liquids to see how they sort of congeal in space. In gravity, remember, everything is sort of pulled down, and so liquids and other types of um, fluids do different things up here. We're putting a new experiment in the microgravity glove box to watch that under the influence of some um, electrical currents. We're doing another fluids experiments in the Japanese laboratory just around the corner. Uh, we're also doing experiments on ourselves. We're trying to figure out what we eat, if what we eat contributes, contributes to bone loss and muscle loss that happens in space. And with that, we're doing exercise to see how much exercise we actually need to do to maintain our bone mass and our muscle, bone mass and mu bone density and muscle mass up in space. So there's all sorts of experiments. Robonauts and other experiments, we have experiments on the outside of the space station that are detecting radiation, for example, and other particles from space. So this whole spacecraft is filled with experiments. Thank you. Sonny, thank you so much for spending this time with us at Wycliffe. We are so appreciative, and thank you for all that we've learned and all you're doing for our country. Well, thank you very much, and thank you very much for the invitation. I know uh, a certain gentleman, Eddie, and Lady Bev were a big part of this, so please tell them thank you. And um, to everybody in the community there in Ohio, I appreciate it. It's where I was born and my mom is from, so thank you very much. Station, this is Houston ACR. Thank you. That concludes the event.